Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we are going to cover how to create depth of field. Now, I already have a depth of field video, but as I watched it, I noticed that it was extremely outdated. So it's time to show you again how to create depth of field in Maya using Arnold. Now there's two ways of creating depth of field. One is through the camera that and render everything in Arnold. However, it is extremely expensive and it takes a long time and it also creates a lot of noise. So I'm going to show you more of the industry standard of how to create depth of field using what's called Z depth. So we're going to be using AOVs. We're also going to be using After Effects to extract the information from the image and so much more. It's a jam packed tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you guys recognize this scene, this is from a video tutorial where I modeled UV map, textured, lit, and everything for this scene, including creating particles to create these bundle of cranes. So if you guys are interested in recreating this, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave the link above and also below in the comments. So take a look if you're interested in rebuilding this on your own. Well, this is the camera that I originally rendered, and this is the final render. And as you can see, it's got fog and it's got some really nice lighting, so, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do, though, is uh, show you guys how to use depth of field to be able to get some really nice renders. But I'm going to choose a different camera. So let's go ahead and create a camera. So create camera camera. And I'm going to call this one my depth of field camera. So this is going to be my DOF. I'm going to look through it. Panels look through selected. I'm going to turn on my resolution gate. And I'm just going to pick an angle that I think is kind of cool. I want to get close to the birds so I can get some interesting depth of field. Something maybe like here, but I also want to see some of the background elements as well. So the pyramids, so maybe something like this will work. Now that you're not setting stone, you're more than welcome to, you know, move birds around and stuff like that. So, uh, so for example, if I want to, I can just kind of grab these guys and bring them down. And if you want to, you can bring them a little closer to the camera. But the whole idea is that we're going to be using depth to um, to fill in, uh, to get some scenes. So another thing that you can also do, and I'm going to go into perspective, is um, if you need some more bigger background elements, you're more than welcome to increase them and just kind of move them back. Right. So just don't forget to take a look at your depth of field camera. Make sure that that cool angle still works. So I'm going to try to get this more into the rules of thirds. And one of the cool things about this particular scene is, in fact, all these monoliths. So I think that's going to work. I'm going to grab these birds, maybe move it up a little bit. Okay. I know this looks crooked, but don't worry. This is just for lighting. And since this is a preview and I rendered it before, I already know that my render is going to be at HD 720, which I think is a little high. So I'm going to go to HD 540. I'm also going to go to the Arnold renderer and just going to reduce my settings just a little bit. So again, uh, if this was a final render, I would increase it. But because I am just previewing it, I'm just going to go ahead and decrease these values. I don't have any subsurface. I do have transmission, so leave that there. And I'm, act I'm actually going to turn off the fog. So to do that, though, whoops, I need that back. I need to go to my environment and I'm going to right click and break the connection. So that gives me the fog, less fog, and I'm going to go ahead and change that as well. So now that I've changed all those options, let's render. Now, the render wasn't finished, but I think I still get the idea that it, the scene is too dark. So what I'm going to do is grab my light, open up the attributes, and I'm going to increase my intensity. <laughs> That's not very high, but I'm going to increase it to uh, 0.3. And I might want to back up my camera just a little bit more because this is giving me a little bit of what it feels like a little bit of a tangent. So and I feel like I'm losing some of the cool stuff about the scene. So something like that. Now, I do want these birds to be a little bit closer to the camera so we can see the depth of field. But I also want to make sure that I have some uh, background elements as well. So something like this. So I just want to make sure things are relatively close, but we can see we can still see the pyramids and the effect. All right, so I like the look of it so far. I think it's working. And again, I stopped it so that um, you can always rotate these things and stuff like that. So it looks, anyway, you can play around. The whole point's not about this. The whole point is this, this is the depth. I get stuck with the details, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on for the sake of moving on, but I could always tweak this further. Um, but let's go to the AOV. So let's uh, open up the render settings and the there's a tab called AOV and we're going to be using Z depth. So let's go ahead and move that to the right, which means that it's going to render. 
And just for fun, I'm also going to be uh, doing emissive. So let's go ahead and use the emission. So move it to the right. So when I render it, um, you can see at the top over here that I now have three pull down menus. One is D-Depth and one's called Emission. So by the way, if you want to render from a particular camera, you can always go up here to the top and choose the camera you want to render in. So when I go over here, you can see that this is the beauty pass, which is important. And here is the Z-Depth. The Z-Depth is completely white and we can't see it. Up here at the top is called Gamma Correction. We're going to actually move this all the way to the left. And you're going to start seeing that we are we're starting to get a little bit of a uh, like a shadow of some birds. And that is our uh, depth of field. However, it's not strong enough. So let's go ahead and change this value to like a negative 10. And now you'll notice that we're finally getting the environment. We're having a black and white gradient from the camera to the distance. And as you can see, the distance is white. So we can use this to create depth of field. Now, I'm not convinced that this is uh, contrast enough. So let me change that to like a negative 12. And I feel like that's that might work, but maybe negative 11 might be better because I do want to keep some of that color correction. And I think this may work. The birds are pretty dark and the far away elements are there as well. So again, you, you're more than welcome to increase or decrease the contrast depending on what you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to remember that this is going to be around negative 11. And if you want to, you guys can type it in here, negative 11. Let's take a look at emission. So you'll notice that emission, everything's missing. That's because, or even if I go back to beauty, you'll notice that everything's gone. That's because of this button right here. The gamma was too too low and therefore we lost all the color. But now you can see the beauty is back and if I go to a mission, I get all the birds and the background um, revealed. So that's perfect. All right, since now that I know that this is working, um, my one issue though is that the background whoops, is also there. So I don't want the background because I want this to be separate. So let me go ahead and select my light, scroll down and go to camera and just turn that camera off to zero. That's going to basically give us just the front elements and the background is going to be zero. And now that we have all of this, let's go ahead and is this, let me see if this is bright enough. Uh, might want to crank up my values just a little bit more. I know it's crooked. Uh, that was purposely done for lighting, but let me just increase this a little bit more, maybe a 5.5. I just want it brighter. All right, so I'm going to pause. I'm going to go ahead and let this render all the way, and then I'm going to save it. So I will be right back. All right, here it is. You can see the background is not there anymore. The render is nice, and we're ready to save this. The first thing you need to do is go to File, Save Image Options, and you just want to make sure Alpha Apply Gamma Exposure is on. So let's go to the next thing we're going to do is go to File, Save Multilayer. And this is going to save what's called an EXR. This is the one we want, which will give us all the layers that we have. Now, we only have like a couple of AOVs, so it's not a big deal, but EXR will have them all. So I'm going to call this my EXR cranes. And then I am going to go to my Z, change this value to negative 11, and go to File, Save Image, and change this to my Z depth cranes. Let's not forget the background. Uh, let's go ahead and hide everything. So I'm going to select all of these objects, control H, select the birds, control H, and it is crooked. So let me see if I can bring it back to normal. Is it rotate Z? Whoa, not exactly. So I can just kind of straighten this out a little bit, see if I can get it to look uh, straight. I'm going to use that and then go ahead and render. This won't take very long. Oops, sorry, my cat's meowing. Uh, this shouldn't take very long. So as you can see, it's dark, but that's because I need to go to my options and or my uh, attributes of the light. And let's not forget to turn on the camera. So now that the camera is on, let's hit play. Only took two seconds to render. Awesome. File, save image. And let's go ahead and call this the background dot dot. I'm going to say TIFF because I like high quality. All right. Don't forget to press stop. And now it's time for After Effects. All right. Here's After Effects. Let's grab our EXR file. I'm going to drag it into our projects and then drag it down here into the timeline, which brings it in. Now, you may be asking, why am I using After Effects? Why am I not showing you guys in Photoshop, for example? 
Well, the reason why is because I think you would get more value out of this, especially when you start doing animations. Stills are one thing, but when you create an animation, you really need something that's diverse and that you can use to animate. And believe it or not, you can animate the depth of field in After Effects. So it would be very expensive in Maya to be able to animate the depth of field. But in After Effects, you're going to see that it's super easy. Let me bring in the background. So I'm going to grab that image of the background and just drag it in and then bring it below so you can see the, um, the background. And then finally, we're going to bring in the Z depth. So here's my Z depth and I'm going to bring that at the top. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and go to layer new and we're going to use an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is going to help us with the depth of field. So over here um, in your effects, you can type in blur, but what I'm looking for is what's called a lens blur. You can see it right here. It's called a camera lens blur. Go ahead and grab it and drag it onto the adjustment layer. So the adjustment layer, as you can see, it blurs everything about 5%. And of course I can increase it and decrease it. You'll notice the edges are a little blur, a little dark. So click on repeat edge pixels, which that will figure it out on its own. So thank you After Effects. And then afterwards, we need to tell it, okay, use the Z depth layer to get the effect. So in layer under blur map, there is a layer and you're going to grab the Z depth crane. And right away, you can see the results. You can see that the background is blurry and the foreground is a little bit clear. And that's exactly what we want. Now I've did the blur and I kind of made it dramatic so you guys can see the effect. But the magic actually happens is in the focal distance. So if I want to, I can actually scrub through this and kind of pick what I want to focus on. Do I want to focus on the cranes? Do I want to focus on the towers in the background? Pick and choose. So let's hide the Z depth layer and go back to the adjustment layer so we can see the actual effect. Now, again, I have a really high blur radius, so that's what you guys see, but I'm trying to make a point about the focal distance. So you can see if I start increasing it, um, the birds are looking a little clearer up here, so I like that value for 26. But if I wanna focus a little bit more on the midground, I'm gonna scrub, and now you can see that I can focus on the background, and it's very subtle, but I can focus on the background, I can start focusing on the birds, and then it can kind of go back and forth. Right? So this is what gives you so much power. You can animate this as well, uh, which is for keyframing. I'm not going to really show that, but again, it's a really great example of like, you can blur something really dramatic. Okay. That's too much. But the point is, is that it's, it, you can get really, you can get some really nice depth of field very quickly. Now, just to go over a couple of things, we do have a shape. The hexagon is about you know, the, the one we always use, but you can also change it to a triangle and to a square. Now, these things are based on cameras, real cameras. So this is kind of like faking that stuff, but it's up to you which one you want to do. So there's a ton of different variations. So feel free to play around with this. Um, I'm just going to use the default, but you can, in fact, change the look, which is kind of nice. Sorry, I need to change the, the depth of field there a little bit. I feel like the blur is really strong. So let me focus a little bit more on the forward ground birds. Okay, coming back to here, if you want a higher contrast, you're more than welcome to go ahead and bring contrast in. So just type in contrast and then you will see that there's a brightness and contrast. Bring that into your Z depth layer, the actual image, and then you can increase the contrast. Right. So let me get rid of hide the adjustment layer so you guys can see. So I can increase the contrast or I can also increase the brightness. Right. So that's going to increase the contrast and brightness of this item, which could give you more control over your depth of field. So once again, I can blur it. You guys can see the effect and then I can use the focal length. So that's another way that you guys can kind of push your depth of field a little bit more and give you more control is through using a contrast. So what about this EXR stuff? So that's basically depth of field, but I actually want to show you guys a little bit more because I, I guess I can call this the academic plus section of the, uh, the tutorial because even depth of field, you know, makes sense, but I would, I just like to push this a little further. So let's go ahead and duplicate this EXR cranes and I'm going to put the bottom one as a beauty. And this one is going to be known as emissive. So with my emissive map, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use something called the extractor. It's a weird name, but it's extractor. So it's going to get rid and you can see that EX and R are capitalized it's for EXR. So go ahead and grab that extractor and put it on the emissive layer. And right away, you can see that it has an effect. 
Now, over here in the layers, there is an emission layer. So you guys can see that the emission is here, but it doesn't look like the emission layer that we see in Maya. So we also have to add a little bit of color correction. So there is something called color profile converter. So grab the color profile converter and drag it into your emissive map and then turn on linearize input. And you can see that we immediately get this really cool emissive look. Now it's not supposed to have any details of the birds. It's supposed to be an emission map. So this is without it. This is with it. Now the issue with the mission though, is that it did, you know, give us this uh, black part which is basically the pyramids. So what I can do is toggle to change it to a different mode. Now over here at the bottom, depending on what After Effects you're using, you can toggle the modes. So down here at the bottom, I'm looking for a mode. And to the right of Emissive, I'm gonna change this to Screen. And anything black will disappear and the color remains, which is awesome. So now you can see that I have an Emissive map, which kind of gives it a little bit of depth. Now the fun part is the blur. So I'm going to go ahead and get a blur and we have different types of blurs. Now you usually we use Gaussian blur, but I'm going to try something a little bit different and let's try fast box blur. So drag it into your mission. We're going to increase the blur just to see the effect. And you can see right away that we get this really nice, almost like fog, which is kind of like what I was going for. I wanted to give it a little bit of fog. So this is without it. And this is with it. Now my original render already had an emission and because of the depth of field, it made it look like it had a little bit of fog, but I actually wanted this to make it look like a little bit more glowy, that it actually has an, an effect on the environment. I'm going to duplicate this, control D, and you can see that the blur intensifies or, uh, and then I'm going to reduce it so that it's just around the birds a little bit. So this gives it a little bit more depth, right? So now it's got the birds are blurring and then you have the environment blur. Now, if you feel like it's too strong, you can always click on the letter T on your keyboard, which is opacity, and then you can decrease it using the opacity. So it does give you the control to do that. And that is really what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys how to quickly create Z-Depth, how you can export those uh, passes, and then also bring it in into After Effects to create this really cool looking effect. And also just for fun, emissive, because why not? It's always fun to learn something new in After Effects. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I know there's a lot of video tutorials out there, so I appreciate you taking the time to uh, learn and explore with me. If you guys like this, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That always encourages me to make more videos. And also don't forget to hit that bell so that you don't miss any tutorials. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free downloads, free eBooks, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know by what you thought by leaving a message below. And if you find that somebody else might find this helpful, please share. That would be amazing if you guys could share. And tag me in social media. I am in Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So feel free to tag me when you guys create art that you know my tutorials inspired or helped you. That would be awesome. That's always my favorite. So again, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating, and I will see you next time.